Hey YouTube, this is Mr. Pinguino, and we're back with Ask the Gal Academy. My pro hopefully, geez, someone else is walking into my room in the middle of the night. That's scary. Mine is just returning to the room. Also, uh, it's called My Returns. Spoiler alert! Uh, mine's coming back. Uh, what was happening? I couldn't see. My eyes wouldn't stay open. So late. Five more minutes. My mom. Dad, sorry, dad. Ugh. She closed the door and tiptoed over to her desk. She was being so damn loud. I turned over, vaguely angry. Too tired. Want to sleep. Rustling of paper, paper echoed from her side of the room. <sighs> Quiet. The drawer shut. I climbed into her bed and the mattress over my head sagged. I glanced over at the clock. It was past midnight. She only just got back? Something seemed wrong. School wasn't in session right now. What? I couldn't think straight. My head hit the pillow and turned over, drifting off to sleep again. Maybe it's like, it's not class time. I've had weird, like, waking up in the middle of the night dreams where I think it's I have class and I'm mad at people for keeping me from getting class. Is this already a new... Wow, that was the shortest scene so far. We are flying through this. Bright and early the next morning, I scurried through the hall searching for Satch. I had to catch him before he went to class. There was no way I could show my face in the senior classroom with everyone still hating me. I turned a corner and was confronted with a flash of bright yellow. Hey! Hey, Hana, what are you up to? Caddy stood in front of me, his head tilted to one side. I didn't know him too well. In fact, this was possibly the first time that we ever spoke on our own. Hey! Hey, Caddy, have you seen Satch? I think he was up a floor. Something wrong? No, nope, I made these flyers and I want to give them to him. I nodded at the pile of papers I was holding. They were nearly as tall as my torso. Caddy blinked as if seeing them for the first time. Cool. He smiled weakly. I paused. Um, is something wrong? He shoved his hands in his jacket pockets and glanced around the hall. Uh, I wouldn't say anything's wrong, per se. He trailed off, but didn't volunteer any information. Uh, is it about the tournament? In a way, you could say that. He cast his eyes at the floor. <sighs> things suddenly don't look too good for us. That's too bad. I can, that's that's awful. I'm so sorry for you guys. He tried to look. He looked at me in surprise. Then a sharp gleam entered his eyes. <laughs> don't, don't go thinking it's in the bag yet, Miss Mizu Mizuno. We'll give you a right run for your money. <laughs> if you say so. Giggling madly, I scurried past him. If you say so. Giggling madly, I scurried past him and up a staircase. Got the tone. Uh, my fingers were starting to cramp. It wasn't that the flowers were particularly heavy. They were no, by no means light. They were horribly awkward to carry, especially up staircases. I pushed the staircase open with my back and entered the third floor. From across the empty hallway, I saw a familiar figure standing in front of an open locker. Good morning. Aha! Uh -huh. Hey, girl. Aha, uh -huh, Hana. There's too many, too many of the same letters just in a row. Hana? I dashed up to Satch and dropped, off a pile, dropped a pile of flyers in front of him, heaving. Perhaps running up those stairs wasn't such a bright idea. What's going on? What brings you up here so early? Look! I took a flyer and shoved it in his face. He stepped back and peered at the writing. Hmm. Be a good date. Don't turn your books in late. What is this? Well... I made flyers to help your search for the missing books. I didn't want you to keep you... I wouldn't want you to keep working on this alone, so... Hana. Oh, Hana. He cringed, scratching the back of his neck. That's great, but I don't know if the librarian would be happy with these. She'll think they highlight what a terrible job she's doing. Uh... Oh, I stared at the stack of flyers on the floor, stretching my hands to help ease their stiffness. Still, he leaned down and flipped through the sheets. What? Did you make all of these yourself? Yeah, last night. My helped me too. Your handwriting's re uh, your handwriting's really nice. Thank you. My hand got tired at the end, though, so I'm not sure the ones at the bottom are any good. Hmm. He straightened and stretched, then stood for a while, looking out the window. Um. Um. You know, I bet I can find something to do with them after all. Really? Really? Yeah. yeah, if we use them right, they may even reduce the library workload. Happiness bloomed in my chest. Yay! That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much, Hana. Really, it means a lot. <laughs> I had to do something to help you. He smiled and reached a hand towards me as if to ruffle my hair, but stopped mid-gesture and said turn back to his locker. Uh, I need to get to class early today, so I'll be seeing you. See you later. Right, well, have a good day. Copacetic. I will. You too, Hana. Make it copacetic. Copacetic. Can't do it. He took a stack of flyers and put them in his locker. Then he left for a classroom further down the hall. As I watched the door close, I realized he hadn't been distant at all this time. With a light, heart lighter than it was in days, I skipped down the stairs and headed to my own class. Time to make up the homework I didn't do last night. Oh boy. It was only a few months before my exhaustion began to hit me. I did not handle lack of sleep well either. 
uh, quickly grew grumpy and irritable. And my, recognizing this from an all-nighter I pulled to write an essay a few weeks ago gave me my space. Aside from that, class went just as expected. Is it already the afternoon class? No, 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 morning, morning class. Afternoon class is like reddish outside. Uh, the normal boots boys avoided my eyes the entire period, accepting the occasional vomit-inducing glare from Shane. He seemed to be taking the whole situation much more seriously than the rest of them, and I had no idea why. I never did anything to him, but for some reason he was never fond of me. Or my hair. I did. I was a little closer to John and PBG, though. I expected at least polite contact with them, but it seemed difficult for them to even look at me. PBG especially seemed to be taking it hard. He was a kind soul, and I didn't think I'd be able to continue isolating my and me if he didn't have the others to support him. If, as if, yeah, as it was, any time I accidentally crossed paths with him, he seemed to be fighting an internal battle. Flickers of emotion would pass across his face. Regret, sadness, disbelief. So of course he ended up turning around and heading back from whence he came. He'd been late to class several times. Shouldn't they know me better than this? Shouldn't they know I wouldn't do something like that to them? But what did we really have in common? A shared school, a tournament, the possibility of a shared hobby? Friendship meant different things to different people. To me, they were still my friends, but I guess to them... I was jolted back to reality as the bell rang. The chaotic shuffling and chatter of students filled the room in the rush to leave for lunch. PBG, John, and Shane left the room faster than I thought humanly possible. Any hopes that I had of walking to lunch together vanished with them. I guess they didn't want to be in my presence any more than they had to be. Sighing, I zipped my bag shut, and I felt a hand on my shoulder. Hmm. Luke and Ian stood behind me, gazing at me in sympathy. At least, Luke seemed sympathetic. Ian was... Well, Ian was being Ian. It's hard to tell what he was feeling with a face as impassive and disdainful as his. Hey. Hey, what's the thaw on face? Do you really have to ask? Nah, I guess not. I shouldered my bag in the silence that followed. I wasn't sure whether there was a point to this conversation. I just wanted to leave. You know, you don't need to worry. I resisted the urge to roll my eyes. Don't I? Don't I? Don't I? There we go. Finally hit it. Uh, the Normal Boots Club are great people. Great people who drop me at the first sign of trouble. Look, I believe you're innocent, and because of that, I know they'll recognize it too. Just give them time. I mean, they can't all be as smart as me. He grinned like a proud school kid. How do you know I'm innocent? <laughs> Luke laughed. He turned to Ian, who grimaced. <laughs> it's time to go. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Luke followed Ian out of the room, whistling. <laughs> I don't know who is weirder out of those two. I guess it doesn't matter, does it? They're both pretty hot. Is that all you think about? Bingo. Hey, I've got to keep. Uh, uh, I've got to have something to keep my spirits up in these dark times. And dark times call for drastic measures. I shook my head. Let's get going. Maybe they'll have lobster for lunch again. Yeah. I sure hope so. Lobster for lunch? Really? I mean, I know it's technically peasant food, but it's also technically rich people food. And I know this is technically a rich people school, but technically they shouldn't be serving lobster for lunch. That's insane. It's a dinner food. Uh, we just came out of Poppy Hall and Maya stopped dead in her tracks. <gasps> oh, shoot! What's wrong? I forgot my lunch money. Would you mind waiting here? I'm gonna run back and get it. That's okay. I have more than enough for both of us. Really? Really? Is it okay if I mooch off you? Yeah. Sure. Maya jumped to my side, giving me a great big hug. Honey, you're the greatest. I promise I'll pay you back. You better. It wasn't like I could afford to be giving people handouts, especially not after Asagao's crazy expensive food. For. For the food. Come on, let's go. I'll tell you a secret in return. What's that? Once, I saw Jeff shoving hamsters with helmets into tiny little cannons. Hold on a second. I need to check if this is a reference. Siri, is this a reference? Nope, not a reference. I mean, it is a reference. Uh, I saw Jeff shoving hamsters with helmets on them into tiny little cannons. Uh, Jeff's, Jeff's uh, YouTube name is Space Hamster. Space hamster, hamster. And I just looked it up because I thought hamster was spelled with a P because I always say hamster, but it's hamster. It's just hamster. Hamster, hamster. 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 What? So that's the reference. What? He was trying to shoot them off into space. Space hamster. I get it now. She needed to tell me where he was shooting them. I mean, Creeps found him in time and stopped him. I think he might have had the hamsters too. I think he might have kept the hamsters too. Thank goodness, who's Creeps? Uh, maybe. I think I'd rather death by cannon than go home with Creeps. You have a point there. And now you know why Jeff's called Space Hamster. <laughs> I could have just skipped the whole reference looky-uppy thing. 
Uh, let's go to lunch while I still have my appetite. Deal. Uh, we waited in line for our food, conscious of several stairs shooting in our direction. Hmm. Ignore them. Look, we got our strawberry cheesecake today. Hmm. Yeah, great. I hated being stared at. We gathered food into our trays and began the slow walk back to the cafeteria where our table was now located. S yeah. I had the normal boots club sit in the middle of the cafeteria. We had to walk past them and everyone was watching. I tried to concentrate on the smell of strawberries and ham wafting from my tray, but I found myself only thinking of Jared's clone. I, I read that it was ham, and my first instinct was that it was Jared's cologne. That was the only thing I could think of. Sorry, but it's in ham. I think I actually said jam. I can't remember the words that I said less than a minute ago. Uh, uh, get a grip. As we trudged past them, mine nudged me and smiled in their direction. No one was looking. They were all engrossed in their... So they were all suddenly engrossed in their chopsticks and spoons. Everyone except Satch. Just before we made it to our table, something caught my attention. Jeff was smiling and waving at us. After a pause, the rest of the Hidden Block Club joined in. Oh! Maya and I smiled and waved in return and sat down at our table with lifted spirits. Neither of us looked at the other, but we were thinking the same thing. The Normal Boots Club wasn't the center of the universe. And really, why did we expect them anything different from them? So you know, I've been thinking. <laughs> That's a bad sign. Rude. Who do you think would take the boots, and why? The Normal Boots Club is almost universally beloved. 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 Uh, why is that anyways? They're a group of crazy hot men surrounded by pubescent girls. You do the math. They're pubescent boys. If they're pubescent girls, then they're pubescent boys. They're all the same age. Why do you not? Oh, okay, fine. I'm getting a bug bite on my finger. Anyway. Well, Maybe they have a crazy fan that took it then. She wanted to get their attention? I don't know. Seems an odd way to do it. They'd hate you afterwards. They say the opposite of love is indifference, not hatred. No, there has to be something in it for them. You don't think... The Hidden Block Club? We glanced over at their table. How do you sound questioningly in British? I don't know. But that's what it was. Uh, we waved at him. Caddy beamed and waved back. How do you say nothing as sarcastically as possible? Ian rolled his eyes. I thought it was them at first, but now I don't think so. They're a lot nicer than I thought they were. Yeah! I agree, there's no way they'd do it. Plus, the normal boots guys are their friends. And the boots were locked up. Someone had to get access when no one was looking. A school official? You think? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the librarian hates everyone in her school, and Satch in particular. And plus, there's that creepy nurse. Oh, I forgot about him! Who are you? Why are you wearing a keton mask? Why is it like one of the bleach mask things? That's a thing in bleach, right? The, the masks they wear? I don't know. Is that bleach? I'm thinking of something else. I actually didn't read this sentence before I asked the question. I heard he killed his cat and now he thinks his soul is inside it. He wouldn't have killed a cat, would he? <laughs> Rumor has it, if you take the mask away from him, half his face is burned. What? Is that just Phantom fan, fan of the Opera? Ex-wife tried to kill him. He glanced in our direction. We snapped our attention back to our food. Okay, let's just pretend it's not him. There's no way I face that guy. Who has a motive for hurting the Normal Boots Club? Uh -huh. We do. Well, now we do, not then. What about... A clatter rang out. A hush fell across the cafeteria. Muffled, angry voices came from the middle of the room. Shane and Satch seem to be having some sort of disagreement. Is it about me? Please say it's about me. I hope it's about me. Uh, and pointing towards us? Satch shook his head vehemently. PPG grabbed Shane's shoulder and Shane shook it off. Finally, he seemed to settle down. Staring at the floor, he said something. The rest of the group stared at him in shock. After a brief pause, Satch gathered up his things and took leave of the table. <laughs> He's not what? leaving the club. What? No way. That can't be right. Satch strode over the cafeteria, stopping just over our table. Heat radiated off of him. He was still upset, though his expression didn't suggest it. Mm. Mind if I sit here? Holy shit, he broke up with them for me. I won. Of course, go ahead. He placed his tray next to mine, sat down, and proceeded to eat his fish burger. Well. Everything about him looked the picture of calm. It was only because he was sitting next to me that he, I saw he was slightly trembling. 
After a while, conversation started up again. The normal movies guys looked mournfully at Satch, but no one made a move to follow him. Satch ignored them. So... Hana. I think you're innocent. Thank you. I couldn't let this keep going. Friends don't do this. People shouldn't do this. I can understand why, but they were letting fear cloud their compassion. I just couldn't do it. A small warmth bloomed within me and tears pricked the back of my eyes. Um, do you think I'm innocent too? Ah! Ah! Satch turned to Mai, who looked at him uncertainly. Whoa. Well, I trust Hana's faith in you. Oh, well, good. I think... Um... Let's talk about something happier now. How about... The rest of... It's almost like I can hold a beat. Almost. Uh, let's talk about something happier, how about? Is that a thing people say? They end sentences with about like that? Uh, the rest of lunch passed compar comparatively uneventfully. The hidden block guys gave each, gave, each gave Satch a pat on the back on their way out, with the exception of Caddy, who shook his hand. Normal Boots men continued to ignore Mai and me. They're always men, but they're actually boys. If the girls are girls, they're bo- oh, Okay, never mind. That's enough times for this, this episode. Uh, that night I lay in my bed watching an anime about loony high school girls when there was a knock on the door. Do you know who that is? No? Oh, well, you'll get it. Rude. I pushed my bed off, off my bed and opened the door. Hana. Hana. Hey. Sach, 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 Sach. <laughs> Hana and Sach. Uh, what are you doing here? He was beaming at me, ho hopping up and down like a kid in an amusement park. There's something I wanted to sh uh, there's something I wanted to show you. Will you come with me? Is this the thing that he wanted more time to finish the flower festival? I, I hope so. I only grunted in return. Together, Satch and I crossed the Bluebell House. Hmm. I've been working on this for a long time, at least a few years, but I think I finally made a breakthrough. I wanted to test it out, but things have been kind of tense lately, so I don't think I can ask Jared to do it. Yeah. Then I remembered I had you, and you said you wanted to help me out, so I finally figured out something you could do. He was talking a mile a minute, and I barely registered what he was saying before we found ourselves in his room. It was just as Spartan as I anticipated, being the love of child of Jared and Satch. You've been in this room before! Why is it surprising you that it's so Spartan? Uh, no, no, we're, we're, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Yeah, yeah, Jared is out right now, that's why I came so late. Where is he? He had to go to the city for some reason, he did not look happy about it. If we play Jared's route, we have to go to the city? Are they like, do they intertwine like that? I don't, I don't know. Uh, he went to his closet and pulled out a large blanket of the lump. Here it is. He removed the covering with a flourish. On the floor in front of me was some kind of machine. Wires connected to a helmet with a visor to an oddly shaped, almost square box. Satch kneeled next to it and started fiddling with a few things. See, I can test it myself, but it's a little harder because I'm the one who made it. I know how it's supposed to work. I have expectations. Really? Expectations? Yeah. It's everything with this. So I don't know if it's actually working or if I'm manipulating it somehow. Plus, I can't evaluate the effects of him wearing it. I'm not sure if my perception of time is whack or if, again, I'm messing up the... Hmm. You shouldn't be hearing this, so I'll mess up your run-through. Don't mind me. But what is this? A virtual reality machine, or at least that's what I hope it is, but no more questions. It'll ruin your experience. Satch flipped a number of levers, and the machine began to hum at a dangerously high pitch. <laughs> Noticing my worried glance, Satch chuckled. Don't worry. This thing is completely safe. I fell asleep wearing it once. Um... um even Jared didn't notice. Were they deaf or something? That thing was giving me a headache. Finally, he finished whatever he was doing and held the helmet out to me. You really want me to do this? Well... Please? Wouldn't you do it, Hana? He looked at me, eyes shining. It was the cutest thing I ever saw. I couldn't say no to those dimples! Uh, fine. Hand it over. Whoa, whoa, this scene. Whoa. It's a whole helmet with goggles. Huh. The helmet was surprisingly heavy. I took my glasses off and set them down. I wondered whether my neck would be okay wearing it for so long. Wait. Yeah, I forgot she wore glasses. Uh, ba ba ba. I wondered whether my neck would be okay wearing them, for, wearing it for so long. When I slid it over my head, the cables fell across my back and eased the weight somewhat. I couldn't see anything inside the helmet, not even Satch's room. Sweat started to build on the felt lining. Copacetic. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on now, alright? If you say so. In his excitement, Satch couldn't seem to tell I was at all apprehensive. I heard a snap, and then wires in my back started to vibrate. For the vibe and what in the Oculus, do the wires down your back vibrate? That sounds terrifying. A burst of light blew through the helmet. I felt horribly dizzy as if I was being rolled down a hill in a barrel. Uh. I don't feel so good. Hang on, it's almost... Satch's voice was fading away as if he was jogging down a long tunnel. Satch? The dizzying sensation stopped. 
Yeah. Complete. His voice floated towards me, a delay between the syllables as if they were bouncing off a mountainside. In fact, I was by a mountainside. I shivered, the lushness around me. It was cold here. Something tickled my legs. I was looking down to see a long shafts of grass grazing my ankles. Okay, hold on. This is not a virtual reality machine because you're feeling things. It's no longer virtual. This is just an alternate reality that you've plugged me into, Satch. What have you done? You've broken everything. What if I can play the other routes from inside Satch's routes? That would be fantastic. That would be a whole... Th oh my god, yes. You gotta be kidding me. This is a game? I heard a voice in the distance. Was it Satch? But it was drowned out by the wind. Suddenly, the dizziness returned. I felt myself being sucked down into something. I shut my eyes tight. When the sensation stopped, I opened them. I was in a completely white room. To my right, there was a brown table. Two cakes sat atop it. A white one, which I knew to be some... Which I somehow knew to be vanilla topped with whipped cream, and a chocolate one with oozing fudge on the inside. I was overwhelmed with the desire to take one, but which? Oh no. Oh no, I'm taking the chocolate one, but oh no! What kind of decision is this? The chocolate. The cakes disappeared, and in their place appeared a moon and a star, shining light across the tabletop. The moon flickered in different stages in its cycle to where the star changed shades from white to blue to purple, back to white. Another choice? Wait, hold on. The moon flickered while the star changed shades from blue white to blue to purple black, and back to white. Uh, I like the, the star better. I reached my hand out to the star, but before I could touch it, it brushed away, just a few inches out of reach. I pulled my hand back, and to my surprise, the star followed as if attached by a, spring, a string. Faint, pulsating waves of heat washed across my palm. Then suddenly, the star wasn't there anymore. In its place was a small pink box. I op it opened on its own, and a piece of paper slithered out and unrolled itself before me. A quest? Nervous but excited, I read it. You are a person who appreciates your physical reality. While you try to remain constant and stable in your everyday life, you have many faces. You are drawn to the mysterious, the beautiful, the things you cannot understand. Part of you wants to figure them out. The other part wants them to stay unknowable. Be at peace. Some things you will know, but many more you will not, and you will never discover. Accept the things the way they are, instead of trying to make them perfect. Did they just try to, like, fortune tell me based on my choices here? Based on vanilla versus chocolate and moon versus star? I don't know how accurate these things are. Uh, rushing filled my ears, and then suddenly I, f I felt a familiar softness around my arms, and it smelled cinnamon in the air. I was back at Asagel. Why does their room smell like cinnamon? Does Satch smell like cinnamon? In which case, I have definitely made the right choice. I felt like I was gone for days. <laughs> it worked! It worked perfectly! I watched him dance around the room as I caught my breath. What? It... What? Thank you so much for your help, Hana. Now, come on, it's late. I'll walk you back to your room. What just happened? Well... It was a test scenario. I had you run through it real quick and it worked. I'm so happy. I still don't understand what he was talking about, but suddenly we were in front of my room. I had no idea how we got there, let alone how fast. Was I really all right? You might feel a bit weird for a while, but it'll go away in a few minutes. I hope you're right. I reached for the doorknob. The coolness of the metal against my palm seemed to pull my senses together until they almost clicked in my mind. I felt much better. Hey. Oh, Hana? Satch had his hand in his pocket, looking at me casually. Too casually. Um, you still practicing for the tournament? Um, the... Oh, I thought I wasn't involved in it anymore. Oh, shit. What's my tournament points? Are still at 10. Oh, no. Oh, no. I need more tournament points. I'm going to fail the tournament. <laughs> I thought I wasn't involved in it anymore in the light of circumstances. Satch nodded. Well, I think you should keep practicing. Really? Really? You think? Hmm. They're being a little obstinate right now, but they'll come around. Trust me, they're great guys. They're your friends. My friends? Really? I didn't say anything, but I couldn't hold back a bitter chuckle. I can't blame you for feeling that way, but... Well, just keep practicing. If nothing else, you can count on me. Um... Thanks, Satch. I'm glad. I believe I can. Thank you. Satch beamed at me and scratched the back of his neck. Be good. Anyway, it's late. I'll see you later, Hana. See you later. Good night. Satch left down the hallway, and I turned the knob and headed inside my room. Hey, I'm back! Ah! Mai was standing next to the door, staring at me, so trying to read my face. Uh, Is something wrong? Uh, I heard what you were talking about. I heard what you were talking about. A small thrill of anger shot through me before I remembered just how thin the dormitory doors were. Of course she heard us. I see. I walked past her and set my bag on my desk, waiting for what was coming next. Mai seemed to be considering what she should say. My heart sank. 
Well, I was actually thinking about what she wanted to say. It had to be something serious. Oh. Well, she sat on my bed facing me in the rest of the room. There wasn't anywhere I could go to hide. Damn, she was good. I didn't know the tournament was still on the table. Me neither, actually. But if Satch says I should keep practicing, there must be hope, right? I trust him. I think it'll work out if he thinks it will. Um. I think it'll work out if he thinks it will. Uh, that's not what I was going to talk about. I know Satcher's reliable. He, he doesn't say things without thinking them through, so... It's not about whether you can trust him. I put my ha hand on my hip, wait, suddenly impatient. Then what is it? Well, are you sure you even still want to be in the tournament? Uh, I... Of course I do. I... Those boys have been treating you horribly. I know you were so happy when you had the chance to join the club and make friends with them. Heck, I was happy for you. But we were both so excited. We truly thought they were or could be our friends, but they weren't. They aren't. Friends don't treat friends like this. It's worth all the effort to practice preparing for the tournament. Really? Are you sure you want to do it? And would it just be for fun or for them? Hmm. I, I'm not trying to say they're not good people or that you shouldn't if you want to. I just want you to think this through. I don't like seeing people take advantage of my friends, people I care about. Take advantage? Were they taking advantage of me? I, um, um, I don't know, but were they taking advantage of me? Hold on. I, I need to read through this. I need, I need to know. I want to say they were wrong. Because it seems, I'm not exactly 100% sure, sure what the context is for the statement. Am I responding to the way they behaved? Because they're behaving wrongly. Are they wrong to say that I stole the boots? Because that's, they're still wrong. Uh, am I saying that they were wrong uh, to invite me to the tournament in the first place? That's not wrong. I'm fantastic at puzzle games. Um, I do blame them for how they reacted because they're being butts. So definitely not that one. I enjoyed the game as a contender. I don't know seems like the weakest choice, so I don't think that's the correct one. I knew they were wrong. I had the most arguments for it. Hmm. Uh, you're right. They shouldn't have jumped to conclusions like that. We were friends, or so I thought. They should have known me better than that. They should have trusted me. Hmm. Even if they did suspect me, they should have let me explain myself instead of abandoning me and publicly exiling us. I don't want to forgive them. Not that easily. You have every right to feel that way, but you, but you didn't really answer my question. Are you still going to be in the tournament? Was I? I really like playing games, but I was just so angry at those boys for doing what they did. There was no way I could play the tournament if it meant helping them. They didn't deserve it. Uh... Uh, well, at least I have you. <laughs> Completely working around the question there. I like it, Hana. I like that. Uh, I need to get to work now, so... But... I turned away from her, pulling out a history book and opening it. I stared at the page, pretending to read until Mai went back to her desk. Whether I was going to be in the tournament or not, it really depended. I wasn't sure yet, though. Practicing would... If I wasn't sure yet, though, practicing would be a waste of time. No, wait, no, you should practice. Of course, I could still play the game if I wanted, because it was fun, because there was nothing wrong with that. Yes, do that. Play the game because it's fun. Oh, shit, is this chapter three? Oh, yes, chapter three. Oh, my God, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So we made it all the way to chapter three in one week of videos, even though it took like eight episodes just to get to, through chapter one. So I get the feeling that chapters uh, two, three, and four go by pretty quickly. So uh, within the month, oh dear God, these videos come out slowly. Uh, within the month, we should be done with this game. I am stoked. I'm actually really concerned about what my answers were there and how that's affecting my tournament points. It did, I don't think it did anything. I'm still at 10. Um, I wonder if I go back, will it be at 15 if I say it's just because the game's fun, right? Like, I like the game, so that therefore I'm leaning more into the game. I don't know. Uh, it's it's the sort of thing that's going to be the difference between best ending and just good ending, and it's, it's driving me insane already. I can't imagine how it's going to be for the next few weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll check you guys in the next video.